I picked up a battery monitor from Victron. This is the 712 model, which means it has built-in Bluetooth. It has a shunt, it has a display, it'll give me a state of charge for the batteries, and I can read all this on the app on my phone. I'm gonna be installing this today, uh, so stick around if you wanna see how it works. They run about $200 uh, for this model that has the built-in Bluetooth. Uh, I personally bought this one from Alt-E and they were able to beat any other price that I found. Uh, now, I'm not sure if they would do that for anybody calling in. I bought it with several other things, but I'll leave a link to Alt-E in the description below. Uh, I'll also leave a link to this model on Amazon, which is the cheapest price online that I was able to find, cheapest advertised price, and I'm also part of the affiliate program if you want to help support the channel. We have a, a quick install guide, manual. We have a communication wire. We have two wires that look like they have fuses built into them. The bezel. This is the actual battery monitor. And then this is the shunt. Something else this battery monitor can do is it has a built-in relay. So you can tell it to turn things on and off based on the state of charge of the battery. There were a couple other ones out there that I was looking at as well. Uh, one in particular was the Magnum, uh, but you had to kind of buy into their whole system to see the display. Uh, with Victron, what I really like that they're doing with both their solar charge controller, which I have another video about, and uh, this unit, is I don't have to buy into their entire system for every component to get them to talk to each other. Each component can work independently from other ones. So I don't have to have a Victron inverter in order to use their Victron battery monitor. We have a nice display that shows the battery side and the load side and it's printed battery and load. It says to hook the shunt up on the negative side of the battery. Well, the instructions say to drill a 52 to 53 millimeter hole, but let's see if a two and one eighth inch will work. That says 54 millimeters. Uh, this is three quarter inch thick, so not much protrudes at the back, but you can flip this around. There you go. It's not going anywhere. Okay, I'm just gonna mount this up here. I think that's, relatively speaking, out of the way. And I'm gonna center it on my bus bar. This is the positive power lead for the battery monitor. I have to attach it anywhere on the bus bar, uh, but I'm a little bit shy of bolts right now, so I'm going to double it up with this one, which is for the 12 volt power supply. I've just been looking at this setup for a while, trying to determine the best location for this shunt. So what I think I'm gonna do here is actually move the inverter. Now I'm trying to get a picture of where I'm gonna mount the shunt. The shunt needs to go between the battery and things like the inverter or the charge controller. So I wanna put it here. It has to go on the negative side, not the positive side. This is my negative bus bar. And this is where all the batteries are. And I think I'm gonna put it right about here. And what I actually did was I carved out a little spot from that rubber so I can put it in here nice and close. And now I'm gonna make some uh, bus bars to go with this to actually make the attachments. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to see a review of this saw from Harbor Freight, but it's still working great. I'm using a fastener bit to clean the backside of this piece of rubber so that I can clear the nut.
Here's what I've got so far. I have a small bus bar to connect to the larger one. And this bus bar will be for my load center. I can have an inverter, solar charge controller, that 12 volt hookup, and a spare. I dry fitted all these parts up and they worked great. So I'm going to do a final polishing with a sanding block and then I'm going to spray it down with some battery protectant because aluminum can corrode very quickly and that corrosion can cause a heat buildup uh, resistance for the electricity. So it's important to keep it clean and spray it down with a protectant. If you want to see more information about making the bus bars, I have a video about that that I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm just spraying it down with some brake clean. Once I get it wiped down, I don't want to touch it with my fingers anymore. Now I'm putting these stainless steel bolts in here. And now I have a recess that I'm going to nut that on. The nuts under here won't touch the plywood backing of my cabinet because of the additional piece of rubber and I have to connect it to the shunt. I'm going to put that in. I checked the manual and Victron doesn't tell me how tight to make this. But I checked online for other shunts and they were typically in the 14 to 15 pound range and that's 14 foot pounds. There we go. The shunt is floating and this outer bus bar is floating. So I'm going to now add these behind it, like so. And I'm going to drive this in with a long screw. This additional piece of rubber will bring this bus bar out to the same plane as this one. So now this is rigid. So when I attach things like the cables from the inverter, and I torque these down, I won't be putting any stress on the shunt. Next, uh, we have a communication cable here, and that communication cable needs to go between the shunt and this display, which I'm gonna mount up here. And then this guy comes down right there and clicks in. This side of the positive lead, and now I have this other side and this one needs to go to the shunt. Go up and over. And it just pushes in and holds. So on the back of this display, we have connections for a relay, if you're going to turn something on and off based on state of charge, which I think is fantastic, and I might do that later, but I'm not gonna hook that up now. This is a data port, if you're gonna, uh, connect this directly to say a computer to configure it, but I'm gonna configure this with the Bluetooth that's built in, so I don't need that. And then the last thing is just the data port. So the data port is actually how this thing receives its power. So all I have to do is connect the data um, right there. Oh, sorry. Here I go, Just messing that up. Um, here we go. So I have to put the ring on first, go through there, then into the data. So I put the ring on backwards. Here I, I messed two things up. There we go. There, nice. I did a little wire management to clean that up and I believe the last thing to do now is to put this fuse in the fuse holder and that should power everything up. Uh, so let's try that. Uh -huh. 
Yep, it looks like it just got power. Great. So I have the fuse in. That's drawing power there. Over here we have the positive lead and it's drawing its negative side from this bus bar and I tucked the wires up there. So now this guy is ready to go. Because this is 18 kilowatt hours and it's a 44 volt nominal system, I think that's 409 amp hours. After I enter 409, okay, and then you press select one more time and it has saved that. Okay, let's try connecting this with the phone and see what happens. This is auxiliary input, no devices found. Finally got it working. Same problem as last time. It was shipped with an old firmware. It needed a new firmware. And I could not get my Android phone to connect. I could not get my Windows laptop to connect. Uh, I needed to borrow my wife's Apple phone, get that to connect, which it did very easily. And then I needed to update the firmware using her Apple phone then disconnect the Apple phone and then I was able to connect my Android and finally the Android connected the way that Victron's website and Victron's manual says it's supposed to uh, but they they don't seem to address the, the fact that it won't connect uh, with the old firmware the firmware that was shipped with it uh, so anyways now we've got it in one of Victron's YouTube videos, they recommend changing a few settings when you're using lithium batteries. So let's do that now. One thing that they said to change was charging efficiency, which is currently set to 95%. So let's go ahead and adjust that to 99, which is what they recommend. And then there's this other thing, uh, PKIRT exponent and they said to change that to 105. So I changed charged voltage to 48.7. So currently it says 100%. Now it's going to sync when we reach that threshold. I think that's how it works. So every time it reaches that charged voltage threshold, it's then going to sync at, um, at 100%. Now I'm not 100, I'm not, 100% sure on that, we have to go through and test it. Uh, but uh, currently it's showing a voltage of 44.77. And there's the voltage of 44.76 is listed here. Oh, there, it just changed. I hooked up my two solar panels to my charge controller uh, just to get it going. Now the positive wire from the charge controller goes to the positive bus bar. The negative wire does not go to the negative bus bar anymore. It goes over here to the load negative bus bar, which is on the other side of the shunt. This way the shunt can measure the electricity going into the batteries. If we look up here, we have 11 and a half amps, 517 watts. Awesome. The same thing is on our app. 11.3 amps, 11.5, oh, 11.5. So other than <laughs> updating the firmware, uh, this is syncing up quickly and it's working. Uh, I can't wait until we hit 100% state of charge. I programmed that to, uh, to 48.7 volts, which would be about uh, 4.06 volts per cell. And I programmed that and if we can hit that, uh, then we're good. Well. Uh, I'll keep you updated. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.